So one more support or lift point to put in. It's going to have to go from right in this area here where that pad's all heaved up up to that truss right there. And we're going to be cutting this concrete out of the way. I'm going to be using a Husqvarna K3000 wet saw that I borrowed from a friend. So let me get you a good look at the saw and then we'll start removing some of that concrete. So here's the concrete saw that I'm going to be using. Like I said, K3000 wet Husqvarna. It's electric unit, obviously. Hooks to the water hose to keep the blade cool and lubricated. It's either a 14 or a 16 inch diamond blade, I'm not for sure. You know, if I was going to buy one of these for myself, it would definitely be an electric unit. Something that I could you know, just store and not have to worry about fuel or it starting. You always see people struggling with these. They make crazy amounts of abrasive dust. It's just not it's not good for electrics or gasoline, but, you know, I think this is a little simpler than a gas unit. But there you go. That's what I cut the whole entire length of the shop with and uh, what we're about to use. Well, I guess I've done about all I can do to make this wall as safe and as stable as possible, other than some cross braces that will be put in after you know it takes the load. So my plan here is just to go down through, load each one, just to the point to where it's taken 90% of the weight of this truss and roof off of this block load-bearing wall. Now, I don't want to take all of the weight off of it because I believe that it's contributing to this wall standing the, some of the weight of the roof. So it's going to kind of be touch and go and I'm going to just be going really slow. Then once I feel like that I've got it loaded enough, I'm going to come in and attach all my 2 by 4s It'll be my permanent load bearing. These jacks will leak down over time and then start taking down this wall. Um, this Hopefully, if this, wall, this block wall decides that it no longer wants to be there all of a sudden, uh, the plan is that this wall here will take the load. So I'm going to go down through here, start loading these beams up, I guess. Know what else to do. So I didn't show this in the last video, but every one of these jacks, other than a couple, are concrete anchored. Just a little toe clamp kind of here, just for some extra security. 
to the pad that they're sitting on so they can't kick out. Well, I think it's loaded pretty good. Uh, I hate to put any more pressure on it, on it than what I've got on it. So I'm just going to go down through here and tie my braces in, and I'll adjust it as it's needed. I mean, it's not this roof's not going anywhere unless this wall takes it somewhere. So I'm just going to start out from the top down, working my way to the front of the shop. I've got my cables tensioned just enough to where. You know, this doesn't want to take off, but this part of the wall, this whole section here, is loose from the rest of it. And I can easily move it. Let me get you a closer shot of that. So that's what I'm dealing with, in case you wondered just how sketchy this really was. So the plan here is to just start at the top, simple hammer and chisel. Uh, I do have an air hammer, and you know I'll just adapt to this as I go. Uh, but I figured it was best to start out with the slowest, uh, most carefulest method possible. So it was slow and steady on these first few blocks. I was definitely concerned about how this wall was going to react to removing any part of it to, um, along the top blocks that are aiding and helping this wall stand. So it was just slow and steady on the first few. Further on down the line, I ended up just busting out the blocks that were anchored to the seal plate uh, up top. But in the beginning, I was pretty concerned that this wall was going to just fall out towards the creek and take the roof with it. Um, but luckily, it didn't seem to make much difference. I just slow and steady, and, uh, and they started coming out pretty quick. Number one. So every few feet there is a stud that runs up from the concrete block up and through this uh, seal plate here and all the nuts are off the top. I've got this roof jacked up just enough to where I can get in there and cut it. I'm going to use a sawzall. But the rest of them down through the length of this wall are helping support this wall from falling out. I mean that's kind of the idea anyway. Go, Kane. Well, this one's quite a bit heavier. It's full of concrete on one end. another one here in a minute.
Bir de bak. Get a lot of these to do. Just kind of clean them up as we go. It'll save us a lot of time in the long run. So I'm peeling them off the wall, you can be stacking them and chipping all the extra mortar off. So I'm definitely trying to take it careful. Watch this whole wall. Hopefully you can see that. That's how sketchy this really is. So it's coming down good. I'm just working top down, trying to get the weight, you know, down as low as I can, and then I'll worry about the bottom later. If a little bit falls, I don't care, but I don't, I don't want the top, you know, going over into the creek. Um, it would be a fast demolition if it done that, but then I'd have to worry about getting the block out of the creek. Now, didn't help it, but it didn't hurt it. So we've got down quite a few block. The sun's been stacking them, stacking them over here. So quite a good pile so far. All of these, other than a few, are perfectly usable block, um, and most of them are already cleaned. He's been chipping off all the all the mortar, and got to put up a tarp. It's supposed to rain the next couple days. So I picked up this tarp, it's a 25 by 53 foot, just a light duty tarp, they're expensive. Um, and that's going to hang all the way down the side of this building. So I'm going to be tacking it across the top and it'll hang all the way down. That way rain doesn't blow in and my workspace stays dry. That's a plan anyway. 
So I'm swapping out air hoses. My old one over the last 20 years has been shortened due to damage and stuff so many times that I have to move my air compressor around in order to use it. And plus I don't like the 3 8 diameter hoses anyway, although they are much lighter to use. Uh, if you're using like an impact or something, it really pays to get a larger hose. This one's half inch in diameter and uh, it's amazing the difference that it'll make. Uh, I've got a couple bottlenecks here, but just the extra volume of this hose uh, will add quite a bit of energy, or at least it seems to, to the use of an impact. I'm just using a liquid thread sealer. This is a Hernan 616. It's just like a liquid Teflon tape on my fittings. Seems to work pretty good. And it's definitely easier to apply than the tape. Decided to start raining. So you can see I got my tarp up. It's all along the side of this building and somewhat down the bank. I want to keep all my work area dry. That way I'm not slowed down by weather because that seems like you know, a common issue with uh, construction is you, know, you can't work in the wet. At least I do have a roof over top of me. So like I said, these are the toughest blocks to get out for obvious reasons. Once I bust this mortar and stuff up here, kind of gets some rubble under the block and smashes it against this plate. And I don't want to jack this roof up any farther than I have to because the rest of the wall, uh, you know, is being supported by this. So right in this area, what I'm doing is using one of these shim air. It's just a hand-powered air pump. This one is a 300-pound capacity. What is that? 136 kilos. So pretty neat, 14 bucks. This is, they sell cheaper versions of this, but this is the one I've got. And uh, I just stick it in the gap there, and you can watch, watch it rise. And it gives me a little, just a little extra working room, which makes all the difference in the world sometimes. And that's it, so pretty neat. I gotta come in here and cut this stud because it's got a stud running up to it. And I'll air hammer this out and remove the block. Come on. Come on. Come on. What are you doing? <laughs> that tarp blowing around concerning you?
all these blocks are basically clean. I'm not necessarily happy with the way that they're stacked, but uh, I'm not gonna restack them. So most of these blocks are reusable, which is really nice. Um, I was definitely surprised how easy the mortar chipped off of these. And uh, you know, we got a few chipped corners and stuff, but that wouldn't make a bit of difference if you went to reuse these, not that I'm aware of anyway. Hats off to the guys who move these every day. Be quite the job. So I had several viewers bring up the concern about the sheer strength of screws versus nails. I'm holding these two 2 before s one on this side, one on the back, with to this 4 before with three 4-inch screws. Each 2 before has three, three screws in it. And I think that that's probably plenty enough to hold this, although that is a valid concern. You know, screws are, in my experience, harder than nails. They need to avoid, it be, avoid being twisted off where a nail needs to not shatter when you hit it with a hammer. So these are, if I could open them, these are GRK, really, yeah, they're a good brand screw. They seem to be really good quality, nice T25 deep Torx head on them, and I've had no problems out of them at all. But what I'm doing to address that concern, because it's valid, is letting all the pressure off the jack, that way, all the load of this roof, it's spread out through 10 posts, so I don't think I'm going to have an issue anyway, but let all the pressure off the jack, then screw the screw in the jack, because I can use that with the bracket design that I have here, and to where this is just a solid member, really. This, this uh, jack is acting like a solid piece of steel under this post. So valid concern, screws versus nails in the shear strength, but the reason I wanted to go with screws on this and the reason I did is because I've had to adjust this several times. All I wanted to do was lift this roof off just enough to get those blocks out and I didn't want to have to, every time I needed to adjust this a little bit because these jacks do leak down, I didn't want to have to knock these off with a hammer every time and then drive in nails. So went with screws, but that is a valid concern, uh, nails versus screws on the shear strength. But I think I've got it covered with what I've done here on uh, on the jacks. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing, little girl? You hungry? Come on. Are you hungry? Quiet! You didn't need to bite me. Come on. Quiet. <laughs> So in this wall, I'm finding a little bit of everything. There's a cigarette butt stuck in the mortar uh, deep down in this block. Mice nests, beer cans, anything that trash-wise that they could throw in the wall, they did. It's pretty common practice, I guess. Kind of like a time capsule in a way from the guys who originally built this wall. Just about to the end.
there's a lot of just mortar waste in this. I'll probably, I may use that in the, I don't know, for filling possibly. There's one of the bolts that hold this roof down to the block. This is set in concrete. You can see it's got that uh, bend in it. So that's set in concrete up at the top there. That's what I've been cutting through with the Sawzall uh, one at a time as I work my way down this wall. And that just keeps the roof from lifting in case of wind and stuff and keeps it connected to that wall. That's it. That's what they're using. Half 13 bent uh, piece of uh, rod. Man, am I ever happy to get this wall down to a point to where the risk of tearing this roof off is, is extremely low now. That was... There was some times during this that I was questioning my life choices, that's for sure. Uh, up on a ladder, you know, the wall's just moving with just touching it, really. But now that it's down to a point to where, you know, I can work on it off of a ladder, uh, or off the ladder, I'm not... To that concern. This should come down hopefully in the next week. Start working on the end walls and then bust out the pad and start formulating a plan to rebuild this. This lower wall not going to be blocked for sure. I'm, I'm set on that. It'll probably be post. Maybe I'll frame it up. I'm not for sure. But it's going to have some windows. Maybe a nice workbench here to where I can get some good natural light in and you know look out over the stream. I'm sure you can hear the the creek running. Um, I, mean, I mean, it's it's in every one of my videos. If you listen, it's kind of noisy, but it's a noise that I that I like to hear. So I think that's it. Thanks for all the support. I really appreciate it. it make, it's making a huge difference on this project. It takes a lot of load off me, as you can imagine. Um, still a long way to go, but I'm glad to get started. So. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Click on my little guy to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. And that's it. So thanks for watching, guys. And see you next time.